The Galaxy S23 Ultra has been on the market for some time now. I've had a pretty pleasant experience with it and I can't say that I've had any significant problems at all, but there's just something about this device that makes me worried for the future of the S series and makes me think, okay, what else? Let's go ahead and talk about it. It should be no secret that the Note line has been put to rest and lives on within the Galaxy S series of devices specifically the Ultra variants. The S23 Ultra is the second coming as the spiritual successor to the Note line, and it's made some pretty favorable design changes here. The S22 Ultra went with corners that were more rounded and a display that was almost equally rounded. The S23 Ultra goes with more squarish round corners that I feel provide a better grip when holding it. Handling this device now feels more secure and allows for a stability that I didn't know I wanted or needed. That squarish rounded feel has also been translated into the display. There were often times I'd use a note device and had the S Pen slip right off the edge of the display because of how rounded it was. I'm not actually saying that the same thing doesn't happen here but it is kind of easier to feel when I'm getting near that edge, especially when I'm really into what I'm writing. Though these design changes are welcome, I can't say that the overall design is in my favor. Before I make this point, I will admit that the Fold 3 and the Fold 4 have spoiled me. I do personally think that the Fold series near nails one-handed and double-handed use. Having owned and used both of these phones, I've developed a sort of spoiled expectation that I should be able to have a device with a large display, but it should also be one-handed. With that being said, the candy bar design that most phones are known for can really only come in three sizes, extra large, medium, or fairly small these days. The S23 Ultra fits into the extra large category, and although most people would be used to using a phone this size, it can be a little unwieldy at times. You have general software tricks to assist in allowing you to use this device one-handed, but those can also create some issues of their own in day-to-day -day use. Another thing that stands out about the design is the individual camera bumps on the back. I truly love these individual camera holes you get here, as I feel that they actually do make the device look more premium. One thing I am not feeling though is this salmon color here, but that's my fault for thinking Samsung had actually changed the hue when I was looking at it. When it comes to the display, you can rest easy knowing that you're getting one of the best displays on the market. The overall quality of this display is just amazing. Colors do pop and stand out, but not to the point where they look cartoonish or severely unrealistic. I have to say that Samsung's AMOLED displays have come a long way and it definitely shows. I think that this display strikes a nice balance between those like myself who like those saturated colors and the industry standards that some professionals would expect. In my opinion though, this screen is actually not perfect though and I do have two gripes with it. The first one is that even though Samsung states that this display has a max brightness value of 1750 nits, it just seems a little too dark at times when in low light situations. I usually keep my phone in dark mode and have messed with the settings for it also, but whether it is on this mode or not doesn't actually make a difference here. I've even tried messing with the extra brightness toggle and playing around with the screen calibration settings. These did actually help a little bit, but there's just something about the way that this display is that just makes it seem a little on the darker side. Luckily, this doesn't affect its viewability in direct sunlight, which is definitely important for outdoor situations. S Pen functionality is as good as it ever was on any device that has come with one. The S Pen glides across the display as easy as ever and provides just enough resistance to make it feel good writing on this display. My biggest issue with the S Pen experience is that it has largely gone unchanged for quite some time. I remember the Galaxy Note 3 and when it came out it brought with it Air Command. Fast forward to the Note 9 and we got Air Actions for the S Pen. After these features were implemented though, we pretty much haven't gotten anything of much significance 
with the S Pen at all, or at least anything I can recall right now. The reason I mentioned those two phones is because I used to be an avid note user and I remember how much excitement I felt waiting for each note release to find out what was new with Yes Pen. Now it actually just kind of seems like it's not even really talked about, save for some specification materials you'll see on the S23 Ultra. I just really miss the innovation behind it and I don't even know what I'd necessarily want from it. And I think that's where the magic of the S Pen was. You never really knew what features they'd come up with, but you do know that they would most likely be useful in some way, shape, or form. The other issue I have with using the S Pen on this phone is that it feels like a cramped writing experience, like it did for me on the S22 Ultra, or I guess any Note phone I've actually owned before. This is a thought I've always had since my original Note 2, but then again, to be fair, I am spoiled by the experience of having such a large canvas to write on with the Fold series. So maybe this isn't a fair point at all, but it is one that I wanted to share anyway. Of course, if foldables didn't exist, I'd still have the same thoughts though. Performance just like on most new Samsung devices is as solid as ever. I can't say anything else on this, which is something I continue to say in most of my videos, but that's actually a really good thing since I actually have no complaints here. The bigger vapor chamber inside of the S23 Ultra also plays a big role in keeping that performance steady since this device can get hot, but not nearly as hot as I've felt some other devices in Samsung's portfolio get. It also does cool down very fast. The software finishes off the performance talk here, and it's also as smooth as ever. The S23 Ultra comes with Android 13 and One UI 5.1 right out of the box. With this slight upgrade comes a few new features like being able to now view the attributes of a picture much easier and going directly into the Expert Raw app to be able to take raw photos. Samsung's Ultra series of devices are usually pinned as the camera phone. As usual with the Ultra series, you have the most versatile rear cameras you'll find on any phone on the market. The word that actually comes to mind when I think about this camera system here is quality. As a matter of fact, upgraded quality. Everything from daytime photos to low light photos in general just have an added quality control to them. I think this is especially true when it comes to taking night photos or nightography as Samsung likes to call it. If you take a look at this picture here, you'll notice that the lights have less bleeding to them, which makes them look closer to what we actually see with our eyes. This is definitely the work of the new 200 megapixel camera on this phone, as well as the pixel binning technique Samsung started using with the Note 20 Ultra. I do remember reading somewhere that Samsung wanted to have cameras on mobile devices replace DSLRs within the next couple of years. And it seems as if they're getting closer to reaching that goal here. Now I don't necessarily have that much bad to say about the cameras here, but there are just a few things to be aware of. The first thing would be that in order to use the 200 megapixel mode, you definitely have to switch to it by pressing the aspect ratio toggle here at the top of the camera. Here you'll also find a 50 megapixel mode. The 50 megapixel mode is going to be ever important when considering the amount of storage being used on your device since the 200 megapixel photos can and will take up about 33 megabytes on average. To give you an idea of what kind of storage this could potentially eat up, if you took 100 photos in the 200 megapixel photo mode at 33 megabytes each, you would effectively eat about three gigabytes of storage if you rounded that off. Like I said, not necessarily a bad thing, but just something to be aware of. So I guess I'm technically doing this in reverse, but when it comes to the front cameras on the S23 Ultra, one weird thing Samsung has done is they've downgraded the maximum megapixels from 40 back to 12. It seems like an odd choice to go with considering this device carries the Ultra name, but we should all know by now that megapixels really only benefit you mostly when you're zooming in 
and nobody really wants to do that with a selfie anyway, I guess. When it comes to 5G on the S23 Ultra, I actually thought that there would be a difference in speed. However, it's actually pretty comparable with the speeds you'd get with the modem on the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Hopefully I said that right. From what I found out, it seems as if the 8 Gen 2 has support for Wi-Fi 7. However, it seems like Samsung opted out of including this as an upgrade, which I can't necessarily say I blame them for doing. Wi-Fi is kind of one of those things that seem to be becoming more like phone upgrades and not everybody cares to upgrade their router every single year. Audio quality and connection is as good as it has been while using Bluetooth. Bluetooth 5.3 is meant to be a slight upgrade that focuses more on efficiency, but there isn't anything new to try out or at least anything that we can access. The speakers on the S23 Ultra seem to have a slight upgrade to them also. You can only do so much with a speaker of this size, but I feel like I hear a bit more quality from them. Let's see if you actually hear it too in this example. When you look at the S23 Ultra on paper, you might think that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or the 200 megapixel camera are the upgrades here. However, I would actually beg to differ in this case. I would actually say that the true upgrade here is the battery life and Samsung is finally starting to deliver on their promise of decent battery life. On my Fold 4, if I go crazy and use it constantly during the day, my battery life at the end of that day could go or most likely would be below 50. If I do the same thing on the S23 Ultra, I still constantly get home with about 50% of my battery life. And this is probably not going to be the same for everybody since everybody has different configurations, but don't be surprised if you end up with better battery life than you've seen on a Galaxy device before. Charging this device wirelessly is about the same as it is with the Z Fold 4. 
I usually charge my phone on a 15 watt wireless charger and when charging within 15 minutes, I get back around 15%. When using a 25 watt wired charger and charging for the same 15 minutes, I got back 18% this time. This time I decided to test the 45 watt charger since it is indeed compatible with the S23 Ultra. When charging for the same 15 minutes, I got back 33% of my battery coming from being at 35% battery left. Of course, the biggest issue with having the 45 watt charger experience is actually having the 45 watt charger with you at all times. And then there's the fact of if you lose it, then you no longer have it and gotta buy another one. So don't know if this one is worth it or not. So for the summary, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a curveball at all of you because I feel like there's a lot of opinions out there that peg this as the best phone ever. And I'm not saying that that's actually wrong, but I just think that there are some things that aren't being talked about. Before I get to that though, let's actually start with the summary of the S23 Ultra. First off, the design has been refined to be easier to hold and Samsung has gone away from those curved edges on its previous S22 Ultra for the most part. I still do think that this device is a little big, but like I mentioned before, I am also spoiled by the Fold 4 size. You're pretty much going to have the best display on the market right now, and you should feel confident that whatever you're looking at on it will look the best it can. I do think that the colors on this display can come off a little dim at times, even though Samsung states that 1750 nits is the max brightness this phone has. The S Pen experience is fully featured on here and you'll get all of the tools you're used to like air actions and air command, but I'm pretty irritated that there hasn't really been anything new with the S Pen for a while. It almost feels as if it's just being kept alive so that all of the development that went into it doesn't go to waste. The display is big enough to write on, but now that the Fold series is here and has S Pen functionality, there is a potentially better experience out there for people who do use the S Pen a lot, even if that S Pen doesn't have all of the functionality you're used to. Performance on the S23 Ultra is as good as most of Samsung's latest devices. So you should go in with the confidence that if you're doing everyday tasks, you will be able to get them done without a headache. I think the same can be said about Samsung's software now. It feels like it's gotten to the point where it just works and that has really been a long time coming. The ultra line of Samsung devices are usually the cameras to beat when it comes to versatility and that still holds true with this device. I personally don't think that any device in the ultra line has had bad picture quality, but I am glad that Samsung has enhanced the picture quality coming out of the cameras on the back here with the addition of that 200 megapixel camera, if you really need that much anyway. 5G connectivity doesn't seem to have gotten an upgrade this time, but honestly, it really feels fast enough and even more than enough in most cases. Bluetooth 5.3 doesn't bring any changes that we'd be able to see but has done some inner work to be its best Bluetooth self. The speakers on this device have seen a slight upgrade in their quality. I can't say that they sound fully full, but they're definitely reaching near it. Even though the 200 megapixel camera is probably the talk of the town, I still think that the efficiency of the internal parts that led to the battery life being better than I expected is really the real upgrade here. We've been promised great battery life for so long and have never gotten it. And it's great to finally see what it could be like given all of the stuff the Android operating system can do. So with all of that stuff being said, here is my curveball to all of this. The S23 Ultra is a great device, even excellent in some cases. However, I can't help this feeling that Samsung is playing the S game here and only upgrading internal parts versus working on truly new features. This isn't an inherently good or bad thing, but it makes me wonder and sort of worry for the feature of the S series because if all we're offered is questionably high megapixel camera counts, 
battery life that we were owed for a long time anyway, and then S Pen that stayed stagnant for a while, then what is there truly for people to look forward to that have gotten previous devices like the S22 Ultra? Owners of devices that are older than the Note 20 Ultra and even the S21 Ultra may find that the S23 Ultra offers some notable upgrades, but like I said, for people who have something like the S22 Ultra, what is there really to look forward to? The S22 Ultra isn't a slow phone. It doesn't have a bad display. The cameras certainly aren't bad at all. So it's just that I worry that Samsung has kind of grown comfortable with releasing what I call S updates. That will definitely bring some improvements, but those improvements are not necessarily worth the higher price tags most manufacturers charge these days for their phones. Of course, these are my opinions anyway, but just some food for thought. And like I said, the S23 Ultra is definitely a great device. And if it's something you had your eyes set on, I would definitely tell you to experience it for yourself, but always keep in the back of your mind that if you're upgrading, you're gonna wanna make sure that what you're getting with the S23 Ultra is truly worth it and you can see yourself using and enjoying the device months down the line and not regretting your extremely high purchase, I guess. Alrighty, so that is all I have for all of you. And I didn't mean for this video to go on too long, but I really wanted to make sure that I said these opinions as well as give the facts like I did in the beginning of this video, because there may be some people on the fence out there on whether they should upgrade or not. And honestly, the S23 Ultra is a great phone. It's, a, it's almost an excellent phone and everything. It's just that I don't feel like it brings a lot to the table, even though there are some big upgrades like the you know 200 megapixel camera and the uh, battery. However, it's just, what else? What else are we gonna get, you know? There are things that can still be upgraded in this device like you saw at the end of this video and I just don't feel like Samsung has taken that, uh, that opportunity to do so. But anyway, wherever you are in the world, have a great day, a great afternoon, a great evening, or a great night and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.